When we reach for a synth in production, we often go straight for something like Omnisphere, Nexus, or Serum. Something that has tons of presets to get us started because we want to focus on the production aspects, not necessarily the sound design at times. But the problem with this mentality is you may be missing some of the important information that would help you make better decisions in the future. What is the technical reason saw synths are so popular for leads? What are the differences between the four main synth waveforms? Is Nikola Tesla responsible for the synthesizer. Well, by the end of this video, all of your questions will be answered. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and when I first started to get into production, I would just scroll through whichever sound bank was available and pick a sound I liked without truly understanding how to get there. I knew the four types of synth waveforms, you know, sawtooth, triangle, square, and sine, but that was about the extent of my knowledge. I know what an oscillator was, but didn't really know how it worked. So let's break that down. An oscillator takes a DC signal and converts it to AC signal. That signal is a repeating or looping waveform that depending on the frequency it's oscillating at creates a sound. And this can be tuned to a specific frequency that represents a pitch and voila. You can use keys to control it on a synth or MIDI keyboard. Just wanna add that the first oscillator ever was invented by Nikola Tesla in 1893, so like 130 years ago. Once again, is he responsible for the synthesizer? We'll get to that. But let's remember one thing from neutral to harshest sounding waveforms is as follows. Sine, triangle, square, and saw. The first oscillator that we're going to discuss is one that we're all extremely familiar with in audio, the sine wave. Let's take a listen to that. The sine wave is about as basic of a sound as you can get from oscillating, especially since it represents a single oscillation. It is pure tone with no added harmonics whatsoever. This means that it only has the first order harmonic. No color, no frills, just tone. What does that mean? Well, let's get scientific as we think about nature for a second. Any and all sounds that occur in nature are sine waves. Vibrations in the air cause this to naturally occur for us to hear sound instead of it happening synthetically with oscillators once they are connected to a speaker. Thus the term synthesizer or synth for short. Sine being the most basic form of this made it popular for transmitting signals, emails, radio signals, and more are sent with one or more compounding sine waves. By the Way. Some years after his death, they realized Tesla also invented the radio. Just wanted to add that little tidbit in there. But when it comes to synthesis, there are a few things that a sine wave can mimic due to its lack of complexity. Examples that are possible would be a whistle, uh, electric piano sound, or a bass sub. And I actually base subs off of whether or not you click that red button. So subscribe, hit the notification bell and like button if you're loving this content. My transition game is still crazy. Just remember that using it as a sub bass works so well because it doesn't have any harmonic information. So using it for your low end will give a perfect fundamental pitch for whatever you're working on. The saw wave. A saw wave is the exact opposite of a sine wave due to the fact that it is the harshest sounding of the four. It is extremely harmonically rich. Let's take a listen to one now. It's the only synth waveform that has even order harmonics, meaning that if you have a saw wave at 500 hertz, there would be harmonics at 1K, 2K, 4K, 8K, and so on. Another thing to note is that every harmonic after the first order harmonic would be cut in half, and that would continue until reaching zero in amplitude, at which point the frequency is too high for us to hear anyways. The saw works so well as a lead because unlike a sine wave, it is filling up multiple pockets of the frequency spectrum that makes it harder to drown out in the mix of other instruments, as well as the best choice to use in the mid-range that will still be audible in the higher frequencies. This makes it a great choice for electronic music, but it also works very well in rock music when guitars are playing lower chords and need something to cut through them with ease. I almost forgot to mention that because of the dropping of volume by half with harmonics, the waveform itself looks like a saw, which is where it gets its name from. Just figured I'd mention that little part. We are on to our next topic. Topic, square wave and triangle wave. The reason I mention these together, besides the fact that those are both shapes, is because they have odd order harmonics. Sine waves have zero harmonics and sine waves have even order harmonics. The similarity between square and triangle is if you started with 100 hertz, the harmonics would be 300 hertz, 
500 hertz and 700 hertz and so on. The difference is that the volume decreases for the harmonics at a different rate than each other. So let's focus on square wave for a moment. Square wave's odd harmonics decrease by a third every time. So if we're still starting at 100 hertz, that means 300 hertz would drop by a third and 500 would drop another third. Square waves are also known as pulse waves because they don't gradually go from positive to negative values. Happen so quickly that the waveform looks like a square. Hence where the waveform gets its name from. Another unique property due to its square nature is the ability to manipulate its width to make a somewhat phasing effect. This is called PWM and gives the digital sound some analog properties. Instead of staying at a constant sound, it will change the sound of the cycles, making it basically analog. Let's take a listen to that. When you think of square waves, think of 8-bit video game sounds. But on to the next thing, triangle waves. These have way less harmonics present than a square wave. Whereas a square does about one third of volume per harmonic, triangle waves drop to one tenth of what the amplitude was. Pretty hefty difference there. Let's take a listen to a triangle wave. The instrument this sound is closest to would be a flute. So if you're trying to recreate Mask Off by Future, this is a good place to start. This falls right in between the sine and square wave. It's used when a square wave is considered too harsh, but the source needs a bit more edge than a traditional sine wave. So now that we've gone over all the types of waveforms, let's go back to synthesizers. Not just any synthesizer, but the first one ever made. It was made by Leon Theremin, and it was the first electric instrument. This inspired electric guitar, electric piano, etc. And do you know where he got the idea to create this from? The Tesla coil, because he noticed that the coils would hum at different pitches based on his proximity. So technically, whether we want to give it the proper name or not, the Tesla coil was the first electrical music instrument with an oscillator. Inspired by the theremin, Tesla is indeed responsible for the music that we love today, the AC-DC current we run it on, and the radios that we use to play it. He was responsible for basically all we know and I'm pretty sure that he wasn't human. So yeah, is there anything else that you guys would love to know about synth waveforms? Was Nikola Tesla an alien life form? Did you learn anything at all? Please leave it down in the comments below and I will chat with you like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, <laughs> except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing, because that'd get really expensive, even if it is a piece of sure. <laughs> Later.